Caledonian goods engines that work on the Scottish region of British Railways. They are kept busy and work hard together, often double-heading trains. Although they were friendly, the other engines were wise to not get on their bad sides, as they would give rather horrific threats if anyone did. Whether they meant these threats or not has yet to be determined. Since the early 50s, diesel locomotives became more common on BR. to improve the railways. They were here to replace. What? One of these was a class 42 warship that came from a factory in Barrow. It was simply referred to as Diesel 5 and was allocated to the same shed Donald and Douglas resided in. I see this place has yet to be rid of oversized kettles, he said disapprovingly. I hope that's not the only attitude you have, snapped Donald. If it is, you won't last long here. Are you threatening me, 57646? Don't you dare call him by his number, interrupted Douglas. He has a name, just like any proper engine, unlike you. Don't talk to me like that. I'm the future of the railway, and you and your kind are dying out. Show me some respect. We only give respect to those who give it back, and you have shown no such thing since arriving. Before the engines could exchange any more insults, Diesel 5 was called to pull a goods train and left. Mr. Winsworth furious. Who does that shoebox on wheels think he is? What should we do? Pondered Douglas. I'm not sure. He's only given words so far, but if he does something to us, or anyone else, then we'll think of something. A day went by, and there had been no more confrontation between Diesel 5 and the twins. Unfortunately, this wouldn't be the case for long. Douglas was on a key at the harbour. He had just delivered some trucks to his friends, and they were currently being unloaded. Soon, they had finished, and Douglas prepared to reverse out of the key. Suddenly, he heard a bump from behind, and began rolling towards the edge. His driver slammed on the brake, and Douglas went to a halt, just as his first pair of driving wheels left the rails. Help! Someone help! Luckily, Donald, who was nearby, came to his aid. And after being coupled up, pulled Douglas to safety. Oh, thank you, Donald. Thank you. What happened, Dougie? Did your brakes fail? No, someone pushed me from behind, but I don't know who did it. Unbeknownst to them, he was watching them, cursing under his breath. Damn. I was so close to getting rid of him. Later, the twins were resting on a siding, still shaking over what happened. Douglas decided to take his mind off it by surveying his surroundings. He noticed a little tank engine sleeping in an open shed. All of a sudden, it was bumped from behind and began rolling down the line towards a key. Both twins were shocked, and as Douglas watched on, unable to move in time, Donald looked back at the shed. There, standing at the back, was Diesel 5, smirking. too late when it arrived. The engine was lost forever. Douglas didn't know what to think. On one half, they were sad for the loss of that engine. But on the other hand, they were enraged. So you saw Diesel 5 behind the shed? Douglas asked. Hey, we both heard a bump when that engine began moving. 
I think we both know what happened. Then, both twins noticed something. On a distant siding, Diesel 5 was watching the sea, and all the boat crane was a massive grin on his face. It was now obvious. He had killed that poor little tank engine, and earlier, he tried to do the same to Douglas. For the Caledonian twins, that was the final straw. That evening, Diesel 5 was in a goods yard preparing to leave. He had just delivered the train there and was currently filling up on fuel. When he finished, his driver entered the cab and they were on their way. Neither of them noticed a certain pair of engines on a siding to watch them. Go. It's a shame you weren't able to get rid of that tinder engine, Diesel 5's driver said. Indeed. I'm sure I'll have another chance. He was interrupted by a spluttering sound from his engine, and before long, he came to a complete stop. What happened? I don't know, replied the driver. We're not working anymore. The driver got out and inspected Diesel 5, but there was nothing wrong, replied the driver. We're not working anymore. The driver got out and inspected Diesel 5, but there was nothing wrong. Well, we must have taken bad fuel. I'll have to run back and phone for help. The driver then proceeded to jog up the line back to the yard, where he would find the nearest signal box. Diesel 5 was all alone, but not for long. He began to hear the puffing of a steam engine from behind. I was hoping for a diesel to help me, but you're better than nothing. Oh. as he was bumped from behind. Do you mind? Quiet you! Came a stern voice. Oh, which one are you? 57646 or that other one? We're both here. Diesel 5 found this amusing. What? It takes two of you just to move one of me. Actually, we both wish to accomplish the same goal, replied Donald. What are you talking about? The twins didn't reply and began pushing. Wait, what about my driver? He hasn't come back yet. Again, the twins didn't respond. Are any of you going to answer me? Still, no response. Eventually, they arrived at the center point and stopped. Diesel 5 watch, as one of the drivers dumped from the cab and switched them. Then they moved onto an old rusty line. Diesel 5 was going to ask where they were going, but since he didn't get an answer on the last few questions, he saw no point in it. Soon they came to an old wooden bridge. Diesel 5 thought nothing of it at first until he noticed something. There was a large gap between both ends of the bridge. Meaning it had to collapse. Can you two stop? The, the bridge is out. The twins said nothing and kept moving. Diesel 5 was now desperate. Are you deaf? I said the bridge is out. Despite the diesel's wailing, they moved closer to the edge. Then, as Diesel 5's first set of wheels left the rails, they came to a halt. Diesel 5 began to teeter. What? What are you doing? Buzzbox. How does it feel teetering over the edge? Donald questioned. How does it feel knowing you could fall? What do you think it feels? It's bloody terrifying. Now pull me back. Now you know how I felt when you tried to push me off the key. Not to mention that tank engine you sent flying into the bloody sea. Diesel fires the mouth dropped. How? How did you? How did you know? Did you think no one would notice the way you reacted to that engine's death? You might have hidden from the workers and manager, but you didn't hide from us. So we decided to make sure you can't harm anyone else. Of course, we had to get you to a standstill, 
And it, Douglas. So we contaminated the fuel in that goods yard with our water. Considering the length of the journey home, we knew you couldn't get back without taking some more. This, this was all planned. Please, I, I swear it was an accident. I, I never meant for that engine up on the ocean. I, I thought his brains were... Don't give me that rubbish! Hello, Douglas. As Donald said, we saw your reaction. That big grin on your face when the engine was announced dead. Your intentions were clear, and you achieved them. And you claim you're doing better? If I fall, the blood will be on your bumpers. You're attempting murder. Murder! Then, he even heard the cracking of wood beneath him. He soon realized that this grip wasn't designed for engines his way. Donald and Douglas quietly moved back onto the house. No one ever did find out about the acts Donald and Douglas committed on that night, but Diesel 5's absence didn't go unnoticed. His remains were eventually discovered by a breakdown gang, all of which were taken to crew for scrap. The workmen assumed that the driver left the engine to do something and forgot to put the brakes on properly, resulting in him rolling on his own. That was until the driver himself told them about the breakdown and that it must have been contaminated fuel, which was later confirmed by an inspector. In the end, no one had an answer to what happened to Diesel 5 that night. At one point, he was on the main line, and the next, at the bottom of where a bridge once stood. Shortly after the incident, some shocking details regarding Diesel 5's life on BR were recently uncovered. After hearing reports from eyewitnesses, Donald and Douglas discovered that that tank engine at the harbour was the fifth victim to Diesel 5. He was the cause of the deaths of four other steam engines, either by being pushed into the ocean or down large hills. It was also revealed that his driver had allowed him to commit these horrible deeds and was promptly arrested. After that, not much more was said on the matter. The death of Diesel 5 was still a mystery, but considering his crimes, no one thought much of it. As for Donald and Douglas, they admittedly had some guilt regarding their actions. On one buffer, it might have been wise if they brought Diesel 5 and his driver to the authorities and let them deal with it. But on the other buffer, he had taken the lives of five innocent engines and it would have been sick if Douglas wasn't saved by his twin. They eventually came to the same conclusion. No matter how it would have went, Diesel Fire's fate was sealed. Yes! Little innocent tank engines deserve to die.